continuation of our discussion on the hierarchy, on the case law and judicial precedent, we are discussing the hierarchy, the hierarchy of courts in Nigeria. Hierarchy of courts in Nigeria. Okay. When I was introducing case law and judicial precedent to you at the beginning, I told you that there are two very important things that must exist if the doctrine of judicial precedent is to work perfectly. And we talked about the well-established hierarchy of courts and a good or viable system of law reporting. Now, these were two of the things that we mentioned will have to exist so that the doctrine of judicial precedent will work very well. So if you're looking at the hierarchy of courts, there are other reasons also why we need to have a good hierarchy of courts. The first thing we've just talked about now is so that it can ensure the operation of binding precedents. Ensure the operation of binding precedents. And this works in this way that if there is a hierarchy of courts with the courts in descending order or ascending order this way, then all the courts at the top are able to influence the courts beneath. And all the courts beneath are bound by decisions of the courts above. So that's how you get the idea of binding precedent of storage sizes. I mean, secondly, it gives room for appeal. In this particular instance, when the courts are hierarchical like that, hierarchical like that, you will find out that you can appeal from a lower court if you're not satisfied with the decision of the court, if you think it's not the right decision, you can go on appeal until you get to the apex court, so it gives room for appeal. Then thirdly, it corrects the imperfection of the lower judges. Corrects the imperfections of the lower courts, of the lower court. Now, in this instance, we're talking about the fact that, you see, at the high, at the high court, there is just one judge. At the Court of Appeal, you have three judges sitting, Justice sitting, and at the Supreme Court, you have five justices. So you will find out that the mistake a one man will make at the lower stage is not this will be eliminated by three people sitting on the same decision, and then even if it gets to the fifth, uh, to the people who are sitting as five justices, you see that the mistakes will have been reduced. So it reduces the or corrects the imperfection of the lower courts, and in the same vein, it enhances the quality of justice. It enhances the quality of justice. So you will find out that most of the times, justice will always be seen, to be, will always be done, and will manifestly be seen to be done. So in order to find the hierarchy of courts in Nigeria, you have to look at section 6, 5 of the 1999 Constitution. And together with the Constitution, third alteration, third alteration amendment act, Amendment Act of 2010. Now, if you read these two documents together, you will find out that the list goes like this of Superior Court of Record. We have at the top the Supreme Court of Nigeria, followed immediately by the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal, then you will have the Federal High Court. Now, if you read the 1999 Constitution alone, the next court will be the uh, High Court of the Federal Capital Territory. When you read the Third Alteration Amendment Act of 2010, it tells you that after this Section C, there should be a Section CC that will now contain the National Industrial Court. National Industrial Court. And then after National Industrial Court, the list continues as we have in the 99 Constitution with the High Court of the FCT and the High Court of the State, High Court of the State, and then we have the after the High Court, we have the Sharia Court of Appeal, Sharia Court of Appeal of the FCT, followed by the Sharia Court of Appeal of the State. And then the Cosmic Court of Appeal, Cosmic Court of Appeal of the FCT, followed by the Cosmic Court of Appeal of the State. Now, it also gives a provision in that section 6, 5 of the 1999 Constitution for other courts that are empowered to also by the House of Assembly or the, either by the House of Assembly or by the 
uh, National Assembly to also exercise jurisdiction. But these are the list of the superior courts of records that we have in Nigeria. And then, just as we talk about this, uh, later on, uh, when we're looking at each court in detail, I'll tell you the reason why the National Industrial Court was actually later put into this part of its constitution. So, as you have the superior courts of record, you will just put the superior courts of record. You also have what is often referred to as the inferior courts. The inferior courts are what you will see are or courts of no record. Courts of no record. Now you must note that when you use the word inferior courts, the courts have always made it very clear that it's not used in a derogatory man manner to mean that the courts are inferior. But when we just show you a few things now, you realize that they are they're actually not as high as superior courts of record. So such courts, you have things like the magistrate courts. Magistrate courts. You have the area courts. I think you also have the district courts. I think you have the district courts. And you have the customer courts. They should be the inferior courts or, or the courts of no record. Um, the main difference between these two courts, if for example, you see those are called courts of record, and those ones are called courts of no record, it's that issue that they, one of the authorities actually say that one of the major differences between these two is that you can always look at the records of the court here. Those ones always keep the records of its proceedings in such a way that you can always look at it and be able to see whether its judgment is correct or not. But you cannot do so with this particular kind of court. But in the case of the Yemi, the Alafin, Oboyo, Oboyo, and the AG of your state, AG of your state, the court said that the major difference between the court of no record and the superior courts of record is in the question of jurisdiction. So you will find out that the court of, he said in that same decision, the court held that the court of record, that everything they do is, is it's deemed that there is nothing outside their jurisdiction, they cannot have handle, they have jurisdiction to handle everything, except it's expressly said that they shouldn't handle it. Now, but the courts of the inferior courts, it's deemed that they cannot handle anything, except the courts expressly say they should handle it. So note the difference, these courts are deemed to be able to have jurisdiction, except they are it's removed from them. But well, these ones are deemed not to have jurisdiction unless it's given to them. So basically what that means is that um, this particular group of courts, you can say they have unlimited, unlimited original appellates and supervisory functions, supervisory jurisdiction. While this group of courts have limited jurisdiction, jurisdiction and you will find out for example okay if you look at some of the other English authorities they will tell you that for example the inferior courts have a limited power to punish for contempt now that is because of the fact that they they have a contempt act that prescribes only a few months punishment that can be given for by a by a magistrate or a lower or inferior court but we don't have a contempt act here so it's not really applicable here so it has it's basically the question of jurisdiction and you find out that the inferior courts are always subject to the supervisory jurisdiction of the high court for example there is a writ you will find when you get to administrative law there is a writ called the writ of certiorari certiorari you can use to watch the decision of the lower court so normally the high court will exercise that writ in order to supervise so this one's Supervising the inferior court. So this inferior courts are under the supervisory jurisdiction, supervisory jurisdiction of the higher courts. So that's basically it. That's what you need to know about um, the hierarchy of courts in Nigeria. The other thing we'll now talk about from this point is to look at each of the courts and see how the president operates. But you'll realize that going in from the 
top to the bottom this influences this this influences this just like that you get to the ones where they have coordinate jurisdiction so we'll start our next discussion now by looking at the supreme court and its operation of judicial precedent